greetings, Inquisitors. Glad you found this holocron. Wonderful day in the neighborhood. Weather's nice. People are mostly nice. Although it seems like people think that COVID is completely over. The CDC said if you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask indoors in certain places. And uh, apparently <clears throat> where I live, that means nobody has to wear a mask ever again. I'm just uh, shocked at how little concern people have for themselves. I would have thought that at least some people would get in that habit. But uh, man, it's like somebody flipped a switch and everything's trying to go back to normal in two days. I don't know how that is everywhere else in the country for you guys, but uh, that's the way it is for us. <clears throat> Nabokov says, I've I've not told them what it is, but I mentioned in the chat that we're waiting for you to hit a big button and we're excited. <laughs> oh, the color looks good today. Nice work, camera. <laughs> it's just a matter of time. This camera is going to uh, go goofy on me and I'll start turning green in the middle of the stream. I got to get me a better camera as soon as I can save up. Like, as soon as I'm done buying artwork for this stream, then I'll, I'll start saving for a better camera. <laughs> improve the quality of life for you guys <clears throat> it's flickering green yeah <laughs> it's just like i don't know what's wrong with this thing like it it changes its mind about what colors are are which um the new chair puts a little bit of a shadow on the green screen and if i move the chair suddenly the camera goes wacky. You can see that? You see how it's changing colors and trying to keep up? Just because of that little shadow on the green screen. <laughs> so I have to get a camera that's much less sensitive or something. Or more sensitive? I don't know. I don't know which way it goes. What camera is it right now? It's uh, just a Logitech webcam. Like, I don't know, like $140 couple years old so it's not ancient it's a 1080p camera so of course I don't know what I'm doing either so it, with regards to cameras I mean there's people out there that know all kinds of stuff so I imagine if I only paid 140 bucks for the camera it's probably not a very good one I probably have a lot of improvement opportunities in that regard <laughs> more sensitive is a 1440p cam yeah, I'll, I'll have to do some research on it. Maybe I'll put up a thing on Patreon where I just beg people to join my Patreon so that I can buy a new camera. I'll just tell everybody it's in your best interest to join over on Patreon so, <laughs> so that I can improve the quality of my videos. I do a little uh, uh, targeted begging. I don't know what you'd call that, but uh, <laughs> yeah, let's see what we can do. <clears throat> a webcam is not ideal but in due time, you'll get a new camera. <laughs> Thomas says was about to sleep. Guess he won't be sleeping for a while. <laughs> oh, well, that's cool. Thanks. Thanks for staying up and hanging out. Got a few people over here. Got a few topics we want to cover today. Had a few questions in the chat I want to answer. I got one uh, <clears throat> sort of, uh, let's say, private message that somebody sent to me that uh, they really are looking for some help on, so I figured I'd do that on video because maybe other people are looking for help there too. It's about the hound's tooth. Pronub says, is there a relic Tarkin? There is. There is. He's not actually relic yet. I haven't done the, the runoff for my video, but uh, yeah, we're good to go. We've got the upgrade button lit up here, so we'll be able to, to relic him out <clears throat> Later tonight, when I do my footage for the for the weekly update video, we will have the relic Tarkin. And I really thought it was going to take me several weeks because I relic like back to back characters, and then I just I'm shocked at how quickly I got enough materials to do him as well. We also have enough to hit the button on Kenobi. I committed two stun guns to him, and uh, we'll hit that upgrade button too in our upgrade video. And then beyond that, I don't think we we've, we've got much going on. We'll stock up for the next week. It's kind of a gap in the Grand Arena schedule. And then I'll uh, hit it big going into the next week. 
or for this week's update, I I may actually I may actually put this Cassian's U wing in there. Check this out, boys. Five hundred and eighty two shards that I've loaded up on. <laughs> Uh, so I kind of want to get that ship going just so I can cash in my uh, massive over sharding and uh, then I can live high on the hog over here in the shard shop for a little while. But uh, but yeah, I just been buying Cassian's U-Wing for like, I don't know, seven weeks now or something crazy. So we've got tons of shards built up ready to go. Ready to go. How's the R7 Vader coming along? He's not. I, I haven't dedicated my time to those materials yet. Although I did get some from somewhere. So I'm only a couple materials off now. But I, I suppose I could just finish out those two materials and at least get level, get relic six. How many do we need for seven? Can't remember for sure. But we could probably just do this. Nine. Man, the conversion rate is so terrible on these. So terrible. And I probably want to complete a full item or two in here because I've got a lot of stuff from the shard shop saved up that I could cash in. So, yeah, we're still working on it. We haven't, we haven't gotten up a good stock of materials yet for the R7 Vader. We'll get there, though. We'll get it. We, the, the problem right now is gear 12 characters. So... I don't have any gear 12 characters to help make more of these materials on because every time I get a character to gear 12, he goes straight to relic. Somebody had said one time, why won't, why wouldn't you just have your account where it was all, all like gear 11 and less and then relics and no gear 12s. And at the time I said, well, there's a, there's a reason to have some gear 12s that you don't want a relic. But as this account is turning out, <laughs> it's everything I get to gear 12, I just go straight to relics. So I need to get a character up there that I can actually use to, to work on those materials a little bit. Um, so next time I get somebody that needs that uh, cybernetics uh, or that armor, that visor, whatever it is, then we can do that. <clears throat> With all the shard shop changes, I don't worry about cashing in to get shard shop gear. It's only useful for the gear 12 salvage. But you need 40 to 80 pieces for every one bit of gear. That, you, you can still get stun guns out of there. So I still, you, you guys know, you saw the video, I focus on like this, these four squares right here with the pulse modulators. But this square also shows up with stun guns, carbontes, and stun cuffs. So I, once I get a good inventory of these going on, I do like to hit that up, for, especially when the stun guns are in there. But those, I, I, I think, honestly, those, these are the only four squares that I ever buy out of the store. But, but I love buying them. <laughs> so I'll just, uh, once I cash in that U-Wing, I'll have tons of stuff that I can purchase. <clears throat> clear chat? How do I clear chat? I don't know how to clear chat. <clears throat> All right. Shannon Smith says, good morning. Wow, good morning. Where are you that it's morning? Australia or something? Have to be on that side of the world for it to be morning, I would think. All right. Do you have them confirming 3v3 for next season? Yeah, I'm, I'm curious too. Uh, I'm curious to know if that's a confirmed change or if it's just uh, speculation at this point. <clears throat> All right, we've got some people showing up in here. We haven't got a lot of likes, though. Flash the public service announcement here. Engage the like sabers, my friends. Get that like. But look how satisfied this guy looks, right? He's putting his like saber right through that like button, trashing that thing. Man, he's got a grin on his face. You just can't stop. He's having all kinds of, all kinds of fun. All right, so the first question that I want to answer today is about the hound's tooth. And I had somebody message me and basically say, I don't understand still about the hound's tooth, why it's such a hardship to beat and, and how to actually beat it. So 
I, I do want to talk about the hound's tooth. We'll talk about how to beat it, and we'll hopefully give some insight into why you should or shouldn't build this ship early game. Okay. So, in talking about hound's tooth, let's start out with the concept of a tank and what you would want a tank to do. You want it to be in the way and soak hits. That's taunt. We have taunt on this tank. In the in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, tanks are notorious for getting their taunt removed and being pretty useless at that point. The characters that can regenerate taunt with some other mechanic in the game, like Malak or Kenobi, those tanks are far better than tanks that actually have to use a skill to get taunt up. So the first thing that we need to talk about with Houndstooth is the fact that it's taunt as long as there is a breach on an enemy character somewhere, the Hound's Tooth will regenerate taunt. Okay? When, <clears throat> let's just read through this whole ability because there's a bunch of text. So, uh, let's do this part first though, right? When Hound's Tooth loses taunt, it gains taunt for one turn if an enemy is breached. So as long as that breach stays up on some enemy, you can't even remove the taunt from Hound's Tooth. That makes it super annoying in the early game. All right, the second part that makes Hound's Tooth such a great tank, if you're taking hits, you need to be able to regain life or regain protection in a way that lets you keep tanking. That's why Kylo Ren Unmasked is such a ridiculously good tank because he has stats that regenerate his health and protection. And he has other abilities that make him less susceptible to percent health effects. So he's just got a good kit for not uh, as long as he doesn't get hit, you know, all, all in one shot, he, he can recover and keep tanking. So Hound's Tooth gains 25 protection up for two turns whenever it takes damage from an enemy's attack. So in this way, every time you hit it, it regenerates some protection. And let's say it, the protection that it regenerates is 20,000 uh, worth of protection. The next time it gets hit, it gets hit for 30,000. It takes off the bonus protection, takes 10,000 damage, regenerates another 30,000 worth of protection. And you can see where this ship becomes increasingly more difficult to work through. While it's not taunting, it has extra tenacity and gains turn meter whenever another ally takes damage from an enemy attack. So in Hound's Tooth, in the starting lineup, if you attack another ship that's not Hound's Tooth, basically the first time you do damage to a different ship, it gains turn meter while it doesn't have taunt. And then it gets taunt, and then it gets breached from the taunt ability. The taunt will stay up as long as breached is up, so then you pretty much have a permanently taunting tank in your way, regenerating stacks of protection over and over and over again. So hopefully we're starting to get some kind of a concept of why this ship is ridiculous. All right, let's uh, go over here and catch up on chat for a second. Drop the forum post in the Discord. It's in, the, it's in their event calendar for May. Okay. But on that event calendar post, it was a typo. I remember that from the start of the month. It was two months, Griff says it's two months ago when there was a typo. They commented directly on this post. It's legitimate. <clears throat> Nabokov says, oh my goodness, hit the button, DL, the red dots. They're everywhere. Oh, <laughs> in the account. Oh, because, uh, because we're ready to level up the hound's tooth here? Yep, we are. We're ready to take that to six stars soon as we uh, <laughs> do the video. <clears throat> the division redistribution and these reward changes are not being released with Grand Arena 17. They're likely to occur season 18, but it's subject to change. So the upcoming season is, according to them, season 18. <clears throat> I think I'm, uh, that's why it's annoying that we have no news yet, uh, which is next season, yeah. Okay. So nobody's talking about the hound's tooth but me. All right, we'll get back to this. All right, so now you've got a tank that's in the way and it's really annoying. 
one more thing about this tank that, that just puts the icing on the cake. On its basic attack, when it does damage, it also gets rid of all of its own debuffs. So the Hound's Tooth is going to be a good tank. It's going to be in the way. And if you try to stun it or de well, if you stun it, it's effective. But otherwise, um, dazes or, or you know any kind of debuffs, damage over times, whatever you get put on the Hound's Tooth, it continues to, um, uh, on a basic attack, dispel all of those buffs, debuffs that you have on it. Uh, so it's a self-cleansing tank with protection regeneration and a taunt that won't go away. So basically, once this ship is in the game and effective, you have to kill it. All right, that's Hound's Tooth. Does anybody have anything to add to that in chat? Let me know. Griff says Hound's Tooth is the best tank in the game. Faction-specific tanks might work better at the top end, but it's most versatile and super useful early game. The two best fleets in the game are the Malevolence and Negotiator. I think you know they're they're kind of a cut above everything else. <clears throat> and both of those fleets have a place for Hound's Tooth. It's so good that it's not even faction specific, and it's one of the best uh, ships for those fleets. So it's really it's it's a crazy good tank. So. Your mindset when you play in fleets, you have to do one of two things, right? Um, you either have to play around the Hound's Tooth and, and actually have something to get rid of that taunt, or you have to be able to deal with the Hound's Tooth. So the most effective way for a new player to deal with the Hound's Tooth is buff immunity. If you put buff immunity onto the Hound's Tooth, when it tries to get that protection recovery, it can't. And if you ever do manage to strip the taunt off, it doesn't get the taunt back because the, the buff immunity will prevent the taunt from regenerating. So buff immunity is the way to get through Hound's Tooth. And there's two ships that are great for the early game. Actually, there's, there's a third one, but it's, it's not as easy to, to go for, right? So we've got... Genonite Anakin ship with a impending assault. It is on a three-turn cooldown, but it gives you damage protection up. It's a big area effect hit. And on your main target, it gives healing immunity and buff immunity for two turns. You want to get this on the Hound's Tooth in such a way that you can burn him down while he's got buff immunity. And remember, you have to stop him from making basic attacks because as soon as he does a basic attack, he'll cleanse off all of those debuffs and your gimmick uh, won't work. So let's look at this just one more time because I do want to point out that while he is not taunting, he has 50% tenacity. So you do not want to use that right when you're starting out in a battle against an opponent. You don't want to use this area effect first. You want to let Hound's Tooth get the taunt up before you do this. It's even better, in my opinion, to bring this ship in as a reinforcement so that you know the timing of it and Hound's Tooth will already have the taunt up. The other very effective ship for dealing with Hound's Tooth is the Vulture Droid. And I don't have the Vulture Droid on this account. Unfortunately, I didn't have that in my plan to go for early on, but this is another ship that uh, you get with the hyperdrive bundle. So if you get the hyperdrive bundle, this is the way to go. And at max level, buzz droids, again, on a three-turn cooldown, this is going to have buff immunity. And again, you're going to want to wait for him to get taunt up to make sure that you can land this. And you probably want to bring in the vulture droid as a reinforcement so that Hound's Tooth will have the taunt up, and you can hit him. Let's go over here to Fleet Arena, and maybe we can try this out. All right, so let's look for a Hound's Tooth. Here's a Hound's Tooth that we can fight against. This guy has uh, Relic 5 Ahsoka, Relic 5 Fives, and a Gear 12 Hound's Tooth. So we want to be able to pick off one of these ships behind the Hound's Tooth, and then we have to deal with the Hound's Tooth itself. Ahsoka is more of a damage threat early on, so we do want to try to, to hit her. So if we go into this battle with our fleet, 
You see, we've got Anakin in here as a reinforcement, our own hound, hound's tooth. And let's see if we can get this to work. Yeah, the Gauntlet Starfighter is also one that has buff immunity, but those characters are so terrible to build up early game, Gar Saxon and the Super Commando, that uh, that's, that's the problem. It's not that the ship is bad. All right, so it's just that you don't want to build those characters. Now, if we attack into these characters right away, what's going to happen is that Houndstooth is going to get turn meter and taunt. Remember, we don't want to do that. So we actually have to hit the Houndstooth. There you can see he gets the extra protection up. Now we got the capital ship. We can't do the area effect for the same reason. So we'll do this. We'll put the tenacity onto him. Now, if we can kill this ship in one shot, we can go behind the Houndstooth. It's going to get his 25% turn meter, but we've got Ahsoka out of the picture. There you see the breach come in onto my ship. And now with the geos, we have this stun and I've got tenacity down onto the hound's tooth. So now we can stun him. Okay, the stun didn't work. So we, we might be in trouble on this particular run, but we also have geos that can remove turn meter from buffed enemies. So we'll just keep hitting him and trying to remove a little bit of his turn meter. You can see his turn meter is going down. So we're trying to buy ourselves some time here. Now we're going to come in with this Anakin as a reinforcement. We've still got the tenacity down. And we're going to get that buff immunity on him. That one right there is the buff immunity. And now you'll see that protection up doesn't come up. And we're going through the hound's tooth in a hurry. And that will get the kill right there. Okay. So once you get that buff immunity on him, it's uh, you're good to go. Um, and then... From here, you just finish out the battle, right? And it's not our time to climb in the arena, and we're high enough in the uh, fleet arena that we don't want to knock anybody who might be on payout. So I'm going to forfeit out of here, but, uh, but, but that you can see there uh, how all that stuff comes together to be able to work through the Hound's Tooth. So you avoid triggering his turn meter at first, kill one of the ships behind him, then you bring in a, the, the buff immunity ship, Put that on the hound's tooth while he's got taunt on and uh, take him down. If you can get that stun on with the geos, uh, that's a good thing. If you bring in Anakin as one of your starting ships, uh, let's say you have, there's uh, somebody in the top here that uses a fleet with Anakin and <clears throat> um, uses Anakin and the TIE Silencer. And the TIE Silencer is an interesting addition to that. Uh, he has a team like this. I can't see the guy here right now. But he has a team like this where this third ship right here is the TIE Silencer. And that's nice because you can trigger the Houndstooth to taunt. And as soon as it does, the TIE Silencer stuns it. He puts on the buff immunity. And you can work through that without having to use it as a reinforcement. You can use it as a starting ship. <clears throat> All right, let's catch up over here on chat. We need a Kenobi alert. <laughs> Hello there. You basic with Tarkin for the tenacity down, let them taunt, and then strike with Anakin. Yep, that works too. As long as the taunt is up or tenacity down is up, you're good to go. Gaunt okay, uh, it's a trap. The Rebel Y-Wing works. It's just a low base potency. So you have to use the Rebel Y-Wing special after the Hound's Tooth is, is taunting so that the debuff lands. Yeah, the, the one that knocks down the protection. Yep. It removes the shield. The shield disruption says protection is disabled. Um, but that, in order to disable the protection, it requires a debuff. I think probably everybody knows that, but um, let's let's look for the... Rebel Y-Wing here. So in order to do this skill, that shield disruption is a debuff. So if that shield disruption doesn't land, then um, we're, we're in trouble. So that's why you got to either get the tenacity down or wait for him to taunt before you put these debuffs on him. Otherwise, it'll just get resisted and then you'll have to wait for the cooldowns. All right. That's why I'm confused why stun didn't work. Uh, Sunfac has the worst stun in the history of the game. 
So if you max the, the stun, it actually says stun can't be resisted. Check this out, right? Stun can't be resisted is level eight for that stun ability. But it's like until you actually level that up, it, the, it, he has like potency of one or something. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, you should have plenty of potency to put it on, but I'm telling you, that stun lands less than half the time. It's ridiculous how much it gets resisted. But, uh, but yeah, once you, once you level it up to max, it just it's auto. I just don't have it there yet. <laughs> All right. Tenacity on chips is controlled by gear and rarity levels, not mods themselves. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. He did have tenacity down, and I tried to stun, and it didn't work. It still gets resisted. <laughs> Apply that Omega. Yeah, I don't think I've had Sunfax gear level high enough to apply that in the past. I think we just now got his gear tier up high enough. So we can do that. We can take a look at that this week. See if we can punch that up. Are you going to redeem yourself on the Allure account today? I'm, I'm not going to get in a hurry. I, I don't know. I was just in a hurry and, and did. Yeah, it, was, it was just stupid. I, I should have just worked through it slow and steady and not try to get in a hurry and and uh, uh it was just bad gamesmanship on my part we should have won that one so yeah i'll take a little more time today we'll have <clears throat> some good discussions and and we'll we'll make it uh we'll make it work we'll make it fun i take it that means that uh people want to see the uh, uh grand arena now huh <clears throat> TK is here. All right, I tell you what, since TK is here, why don't we just go ahead and hit up that account review? <clears throat> yeah, sure. Thanks, Nabokov. That that would be good. Let me uh let me pull up TK the Pit Fighter. We can do that. Have a look at his account. Snoop around. Stick our nose into other people's business. Uh-oh, I moved. The camera's going to go crazy now. <laughs> All right. TK. <clears throat> I stuffed my Grand Arena. JKR is the only obstacle, and I can't get through. There's Early game, there's a, there's a lot of, you know, if, if you, the team that you have matches up against the other team and, and you don't win... You, you often just don't have cleanup power to go in there and clean it up. <laughs> That's, uh, and I love that about Grand Arena. I love that. I don't want that to change. So if they really do implement those changes like they said, and you only have three teams until like 3 million galactic power, it's not going to be, you're not going to be stretched that thin anymore. I, I love being like stretched all the way out so that you can barely, uh, you know, beat it with your last team. I, I think it should be that way. All right, <clears throat> TK, number one in fleet. So first off, we don't have to talk about much. As long as a guy's getting number one in fleet, he must be a Darth Loquitur fan, know what's going on. Probably knew what was going on before he got over to my channel. But rock and roll, hallelujah, look at this. Number one, number 22 in arena. I happen to know that this is a hyperdrive account that was started up in December. So he's developed, uh, when you open a hyperdrive account, you end up about 700,000 galactic power. So he's added about another million galactic power on since then in five months. So that's pretty good. Uh, 740 of it in ships, a million of it in characters for a total of about 1.8 million galactic power. Rock solid. Now, I do want to talk about the fact that we have geos on a hyperdrive account. And in the past, I know a lot of people haven't recommended that. And even me in my prior hyperdrive bundle, I did not recommend it. But talking with people, seeing how things work, you know, looking through the guild stuff, uh, I'm a believer. I, I believe that even if you build the hyperdrive account, you should still build the geos. So if anybody's watching early game, buying the hyperdrive bundle, this account is something you could model your own account after 
with the idea that even though you're going to get these hyperdrive characters, you're still going to go back, take your time, get these geos up and running. Look at this. Vulture droid, boom, seven stars, maxed out, good to go. Look at that. Oh, well, he's got one more skill to go on this. But, uh, but yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome. Jealous of that. I wish I had that on my account. And he's got the hyena bomber started too. Look at this, four stars on his hyena bomber. He's got that up and running. So we've got the Geo Fleet. We've got a couple Galactic Republic ships. We've got the Silencer here. So he's got his main fleet for offense. He's got these three ships and a fives. Um, you know, let's say for defense, he's got the Hound's Tooth. So clearly has two decent fleets that he can work with. And he's going for Malevolence. I know that he already uh, said that he was going to go for Malevolence. So that's the way we're headed. Let's go check out chat and see what we've got over here. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, Tim, you sent me the DM. I, I did see it, so yeah, that's good. <laughs> uh, why is it that I've seen so many guilds called ANZGC? Because it's a, a, an alliance of guilds. They spell the guild name slightly differently so that it's all the same guild in the alliance. Put a few spaces in it. <clears throat> They're a top alliance in the game. They're very large. Yeah, indeed. All right, so ships, we're looking rock solid, you know, and we've got some of these ships in the middle, but a lot of that came with the hyperdrive bundle. And then we've got a plow here that we've developed. So this is just, this is solid work here. This is... This is great. I, I, I don't really have advice for fleets. Just keep doing what you're doing. You know, keep building that Hound's Tooth. Keep working on that Malevolence fleet that you're doing. You've got a great second fleet going. And, uh, you know, someday you'll, you can go into the negotiator with what you're building. So it's great. Over here on the account, we've got Jedi Knight Revan at five. We've got a Padme team. Padme is at five. Jolie, Grandmaster Yoda, Jedi Knight Anakin, Darth Vader. So top shelf full of relics. And uh, obviously that's helping him get a very good score in the squad arena. So this account is quite self-sufficient by now with gems, uh, crystals, I have to imagine. You know, getting top 50 in arena and number one in, in fleet is really going to help propel more and more and more progress on the account. Geos are all gear 12. We're Watt ready, so this all should be able to do Watt Tambor. We've got a few characters here coming up. We've got Grand Moff Tarkin at gear 12. The Kenobi has started. Uh, Palpatine's unlocked. We've got uh, we've got Newt Gunray. Look, what? Oh, oh, yeah, Newt Gunray. For a second there, I thought that was Watt Tambor. I was uh, reading it wrong. I thought seven-star Watt Tambor in this account. That would be pretty impressive, but... <laughs> yeah, that's Newt Gunray. So Newt, that's good. It's good to have a Newt help out with some things in the game, credit heist, other separatist teams and whatnot. I don't see the Grievous. So if we're going to build a Malevolence fleet, uh, I hope you got the Grievous being built somewhere. I hope you're grabbing Grievous shards out of the fleet store every time they show up. If you don't have that, uh, you know, check that store three times a day when it refreshes. Make sure you're getting those Grievous Shards out of there every time. So this account is going for the Darth Revan side of things into Malak. So that's the current project. And Juhani is being farmed. She is a pretty slow farm. And uh, who else do we need to farm? Bastila Sean Fallen is up there somewhere, I think. Um, I'm looking for the Juhani. I don't see it. Where's the Juhani? There she is. She's four stars. And there's Bastila down here at four stars as well. So we've got a ways to go before Darth Revan unlock. But then the question was sort of what do we do from there? Now I'm going to lay some groundwork for our new video series as well as doing TK's review. So the important question to ask is not what character to build next. The important thing to ask is what are you going to do in the game? What do you want to be good at in the game? 
Do you want to be good at PvP, Grand Arena? Is that your, is that your style of play? Are you a, a guild player? Do you want to get better and better at doing the territory battles and helping your guild out? Or do you want to lock in your dominance in this squad arena and get number one? And, and really, you know, get one in fleet and one in arena and be very self-sufficient. So what, I wonder if you could uh, say over in chat, TK, what, what are you thinking? What's kind of the direction that you want to go with this account? And then I'll explain why I'm putting it in those terms for the rest of the chat to learn from. All right, let's, uh, let's check this over here. <clears throat> Going for Malevolence, finish Hyena first, need to be six star minimum for me. And then go and do Hound's Tooth. Yeah, if you have to pick between one or the other, uh, do Hyena Bomber first. Let's see if there's any other stuff over here. Relic Grievous would be nice. Yeah, of course. <laughs> if not Galactic Legend, I would go for Gas, says Joseph. Yeah, let's see if TK is going to answer. I don't see anything from him yet. But uh, but yeah, so there, there's different paths. This account is so well set up to do anything it wants for the next move. I just, I got to say, this is a beautiful opening to this account and uh, can go pretty much anywhere you want from here. <clears throat> Agree with what Nabokov said. The account is in a very good spot right now. Yeah, it really is. It really is in a, it, it great. Yep. Okay, so I don't see an answer, so I'm just going to answer it in those different ways. So if you look at the build into General Skywalker, you need the Separatist droids. You're going to build Malevolence anyway which means you're going to build Grievous anyway. So you already will have a start on the Separatist side of things. Um, you got the Magna Guard here. Uh, you haven't started with the other Separatist droids yet, but, you know, that's a kind of a path to gas. You do have the Padme team already up and running. So it's not a stretch of the imagination to imagine that uh, that... General Skywalker could be a good target for this account. The reason you would build Skywalker is if you want to do well in guild stuff. That's really going to help you out in the light side territory battles. It's going to give you a good team over there. Pot potentially give you access to Kiati Mundi shards once you finish out the gas and the 501st. It, um, it, it's going to help you in uh, Rancor. It'll get you two good teams for Rancor. It'll get you Territory war stuff that's either going to hold or get good banners on offense. So it's really a guild-based thing to go for General Skywalker. That, that I think, is the, what will help you the most if you want to work on the guild stuff and, and events and territory battles and, and do well over there. By the same token, the Hyperdrive bundle already puts you so far toward SLKR that if you just want to lock in your dominance on Squad Arena and build a Galactic Legend, you can build into SLKR from where you're at. You'll have such great account stabilization. You'll have the Vader, you'll have the, the Revan, the Padme, the Darth Revan. So you'll have rock-solid teams as your foundation, and then when you build the SLKR, you're still going to be able to play the game and get all kinds of events done and... And, and fund your account and fund your building of the Galactic Legend with these other teams. So that's the, that's the second possible path that you could go. And the third path that you could go, if you really want to do, uh, let's say, PvP, you could just, instead of trying to build more teams, you could just work on relicking out the teams that you have in here. You could finish out the relics on Padme, finish out some more relics on Jedi Knight Revan um, when Malak gets up and running, and, and really build up your, your PvP dominance for Grand Arena. So that's a third path that you could take. And then, you know, while you're doing that, you could also build up a clone team, for example, and start working toward one of the other things. So I, I would say it depends on what you want to do with this account, what direction you want to take.
Let's go catch up on chat again. All right. AP Gaines in the house. All right. Cool. Hey, man. For guild stuff, you want to prioritize Kiati Mundi special mission team because they can solo every raid. <laughs> yep. And then do gas event. <laughs> All right. Wish I could stay longer for the live stream. Breaks over. All right, Storm Pooper. See you later, man. All right, so I didn't see anything from TK saying where he wanted to go with the account, but but for sure that's the, the two biggest options that I could see if you really want to do like more guild and event stuff, General Skywalker. If you really want to do more PvP stuff, better in Conquest, um, better in those kind of game modes, then switch over to the SLKR, and your team is plenty stable to to work on your Galactic Legend for six or eight months or however long it takes you to get him. It'll be a project, but then you'll have one of the best characters in the game and you'll really take everything to a next level in Conquest and these other game modes and in your squad arena. In terms of modding, I'm not going to look too much at modding. This count is only since December and, and TK knows that he's got to work on mods uh, from being a hyperdrive player. Uh, so that's already under underway and in progress. I don't think I want to spend too much time going over the mod stuff. And, and for TK, if you look at this later and you say, hey, I, I do want some specific mod advice, just hit me up. And we'll go back into the account and we'll scout. So I would say just in general, two thumbs up. If you're watching this stream and your account is new, Hyperdrive account, you know, build it like TK is building his account. And uh, that'll put you in, in really good shape for the game. All right, I agree. It's Grand Arena time. Unmentioned, but we're chatting here about the Vader Unique and EP Lead Zeta next. What do you see? Oh, in terms of Zetas? Let's, uh, let's go back in and look if, if that's actually something specific that was being asked. In terms of Zetas, so I, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't go crazy with with Vader or Palpatine or any of it. What I would do, um, it, ah, let me think. You you want to save up so that as soon as that Darth Revan hits the table and you get Darth Malak unlocked, uh, you can just chuck Zetas on those guys. So yeah, I would say Vader. Go ahead and do the no escape on Vader. But then I, I would wait. I would I would hold on to my Zetas until I see that Darth Revan's smiling face in here. And then the day he unlocks, I would just want to slap all three Zetas onto that Darth Revan. That's what I would do. Probably do the, the, the no escape on Vader and then just hoard. <clears throat> the Vader unique is greater by the EP lead than far. <laughs> Lokewitter doesn't get how good the EP Zeta is. Well, maybe I don't. Maybe I just don't value it quite as much as uh, other things. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we sure, it's, uh, you know, I can't see it from his account. But, but yeah, I mean, it's not a bad Zeta. Sure, it's good to have a Zeta on Palpatine. Um, but it all depends on how much you got saved. So if I got 60 in the bank and I still don't have Darth Revan, then I can hit up Palpatine and keep working back back up to 60. So I would do that. I would... I would put one here, and then I wouldn't, I wouldn't say to anything else, unless I had sixty in the bank. That's, that's just me. That's that's the way I do it. I've got forty in the bank on my low quarter account now, and uh, I haven't spent them in the last couple weeks because I'm probably going to spend them on Mon Mothma whenever I get her going. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't mind every now and then to sit on a couple Zetas. Decide where you're going to use them. EP lead is really good. <clears throat> the uh, EP turn the turn meter you get without the uh, you don't need the Zeta for that right. When they inflict a debuff, they gain twenty percent turn meter. See that's already in there. That's already in there without the Zeta. You don't need the Zeta to make that happen. The Zeta is just the um, the turn meter when buffs expire. Is that? 
Let me just check and make sure. When a debuff expires, they gain 5% turn meter. So yeah, that, that helps, you know, drive the, the team faster when... It gives it to all allies, so if Vader's, like, shooting buffs or debuffs everywhere, it, uh, it does help the rest of the team go fast. When he calling blades, it gets rid of debuffs and, and accelerates. So yeah, it's a good Zeta. I'm not going to argue that it's good. I just don't know that I would prioritize it over everything else. That's just me. You can see. My <laughs> on my main account, I still don't have it. So Mon Mothma when? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. That's a good question. Once I get this Cassian's U-Wing unlocked and I see how far I get my little Rebel pilots, then we'll decide if it's time for Mon Mothma or not. It's, it's a lot of galactic power. The team isn't that good. And Mon Mothma is horrendous in 3v3. She's just bad in 3v3. She shares less stats. Um, once the other two characters are dead, she just runs away. So she is a bad 3v3 character. So I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not excited about building her going into the 3v3 Grand Arena season. If the next season was 5v5, then I definitely would get her up and going right now. And, and have her for the next Grand Arena round. But in 3v3, she's kind of trash. So I might just use Jin, K2, and Cassian for now and get them started for the 3v3 round and then build Mon Mothma next month. I don't know. We'll see. <clears throat> you have Mon Mothma on the big account. Would be interesting to see a better fit for the sea path. Help me out there, Nabokov. What do you mean? What do you mean by a better fit for the sea path? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's Phoenix. I mean, Phoenix is the right fit. I should have done Phoenix right away, unlocked Palpatine and Thrawn, um, but I didn't. And now, now I'm just waiting on getting some Rebels going. I still have to get Phoenix going at some point because I still need the Thrawn, and that's the only way to get him. So I'm, I may have Phoenix before I ever build him on Mothma team. Yep. Yep. It's a good team. I just I I don't I wouldn't mind at all to build it. I just don't have the resources and the galactic power to to just like stick it in a corner somewhere and build it. That's the problem. <clears throat> but she's a single drop at the moment, so she's a long farm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, she's a long farm, but you don't need a great Mon Moth. I mean, you can just put her at 4 stars and you know, gear 9 or whatever. She doesn't have to be the star of the show. If the other characters on the team are good, once she's untargetable and, you know, with the tenacity stuff that I do, she's, uh, you know, she hides, she's like Hermit Yoda. She hides out and doesn't die that easily, even to a couple of area effects. So you don't need a huge Mon Mothma. You do eventually, but not right away. All right, let's, uh, <laughs> Mothma gets soloed by Marauder if the Marauder's on defense. Yeah, I mean, Marauder gets to go every time the Mon Mothma team goes. So if your Mon Mothma is on offense, it would not be a good idea to take it in against Marauder. But Marauder, I mean, again, I build my team with tenacity. So if you bring a Marauder in thinking you're going to beat my Mon Mothma team, uh, you're, I'm not going to have any debuffs on. So the Mar Marauder will get to go a lot, but he's not going to do a lot of damage. And he's going to be hitting K2SO anyway, so what do I care? Doesn't even matter. All right, we're about to get into the Grand Arena, boys and girls. Just about, just about. The troopers are not powered up. Right now, if we ran the troopers, they would fail. So we do have to get this like button killed. Look how much fun this guy's having. I just want to keep pointing that out. Look how satisfying this is. Killing like buttons, very satisfying. Try it out. I think you'll like it. All right. So let's get into this Lokwater account Grand Arena. I think we got a little bit of a surprise. <laughs> a little bit of a surprise. I'm a long way off from Kyber. Man, like I, I feel like I, I might not even get Kyber this season, which is odd because um, I'm, what, uh, nine wins and two losses right now. I've got a good record. I've had pretty good wins. 
but uh, I just haven't been able to complete almost any of these feats. There's There's been like no feats that I can cheese, and I'm not going to get this uh, Grand Arena thing. I'm not going to get my underdog uh, feat to the last level. Uh, maybe I will. i got to do three underdogs today to get this uh, cashed in. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in jeopardy of not getting Kyber. It's just been really hard for me to get feats against all these Maliks that I've been facing. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, so we did win that last round. Uh, we saw that on stream. My opponent this time around has this Padme team up and running. All relics except for the Yoda. We've got uh, a bunch of fleet stuff going on too. Got the Galactic Republic fleet here, Geo fleet here, some other leftover ships, the Silencer and Fives. We've got the Executrix and the Home One. Home One has some effort put into it as well as the Executrix, so he's got <clears throat> a decent defensive fleet behind his offensive fleet. I imagine he's using the Geos on offense, and the defense is probably these ships here, so that's pretty pretty beefy defense, kind of scary. In terms of characters, we've got the Padmes. We've also got a Relict Geo Brute Alpha. We've got Bastila Fallen, Jedi Knight Revan, Darth Revan, Kenobi, uh, Jolie Bindo with Zeta, HK with Zeta. So when you look at this account, when I look at this account, I think even though his Revan and stuff is low level, I still would expect to see either the Revan team on defense or, you know, just this Padme team stuffed on defense where it's like <clears throat> a brick wall and, and it's the go, no go, right? <laughs> Put that on defense and, and I'm just done. So that's what I was expecting. So what we did for defense, we planned as if he was going to put the big offense, our big defense up. So we put our geos here in front of ships. Got no hold. We put the Padme team here. Didn't hold. We put our little bounty hunter team back here. He beat that, and we put our fleet here, and he walked through that with two reinforcements, though, so i got to imagine that we did some pretty decent work. Now, I did something a little different with my fleet this time. Normally, I would have taken the Geos on offense, but this time I put the Geos on defense because I was thinking that if he brought, um, if he brought his Geos on offense, uh, then I can beat what he leaves on defense, if he brings his Galactic Republic, this team will at least give the Galactic Republic a hard time because of the stealth. So I did put in the Geo fleet, but I put them with my home one capital ship, so a little bit substandard. But, uh, but yeah, with two reinforcements coming in, I get the feeling like we, we must have done some good work in fleet. Uh, 1198 is his total for the day. He put the Revan team here in front of the ships 107,000 we've got the old republic here with a random bosk at the end of it to tank this uh, this looks pretty easy except for the bosk and then i don't know what's on the back wall but we've got to assume since he cleared all of this stuff that he did bring the darth revan over i i feel like he must have brought the geos over and i feel like he must have had the padme team so this back wall, to me, it feels like can't be that good, right? It can't be that good of a back wall. If he, if he beat everything I have in one shot, this back wall seems to me like it would either be the Darth Revan team, which isn't that bad, um, w without a Malik and, and at the levels that he's got. So I don't know. I feel like we just clear this out probably with Jedi or something, see what's on the back wall. We should be able to trooper that uh, Dart or that Jedi Knight Revan team, and then we should be able to Vader whatever's on his back wall. That's the hope. That's what we're looking at. Why is Juhani there? He's just making a defense out of what he's got left over. So he's just taking all these leftovers from the building up the Revans, and he just throws a team together and and puts it in there. 
Yeah, it's not not because it's great. Joey says he averaged 56 banners. And yes, I did the math correctly. All right, so we just need a couple clean wins. Juhani over Mission. I don't know. I don't know why he would pick Juhani over Mission. You're right. That doesn't make a lot of sense. You would think he would uh, put Mission in here. She's a leftover. She's got to be in there somewhere, right? Huh. Yeah. Interesting. All right. So how many Jedi do we need? I think we need clean wins. We can't, we can't drop. So if I put in Plo, I'll get turn meter. Th this guy is the only guy I'm worried about, right? And we just got to keep hitting him until he goes down. So taking my time today, not going to get in a hurry. <laughs> We're going to pick the Jedi. How many Jedi do I need? Four or five? I, I still have that undermanning feat, right? So if I can get three undermans today, then I also get that feat. So if, if I can beat it with four Jedi, I probably should beat it with four. That's 55,000 galactic power. He's got 64. That's a lot of galactic power. Where's his galactic power? That boss. That boss must be beefier than I think. If it's just me against Bosk, I'm not too worried about it because he'll he'll be hard to kill. But he, you know he doesn't do that much damage. So as long as we kill the rest of the team, I think we're good. Four for the feet. AOE ability is key to wipe them all out. Vader solo. Uh, yeah, I gotta save Vader for the back wall. That's the thing. I don't know what's on the back wall. He might have some surprising little defense hidden on the back wall. So we're going to go in with this, and we're going to try real hard not to get surprised on the back wall. And then we can make some decisions about where we're going to use our Vader and where we're going to use our troopers. All right, so let's let's just... Uh, Candrus is probably the biggest damage dealer he's got, right? So let's just go over, hit him with a basic... We'll send Yoda over with a basic again. All right. Now we're cruising. Let's do ability blocks on everybody. Now let's hit everybody. And then spread some buffs. Then we'll stun this Zalbar. See if we can work around the uh, taunt here. Take that off with Ezra Bridger. Get back over here. Try to kill this Candrus off. We've got buff immunity on Zalbar, so that's kind of fun. All right, let's finish off Zalbar before he finds a way to heal up. Let's taunt with Kenobi so that we don't lose any more banners than we have to. And just keep tapping on these guys. Uh, let's bring in Yoda for the assist. All right, and as predicted, we're down to just Bosk and us. Stun him up. Get the buff immunity on him. And it's all over, 60 banners. We did lose protection on one of our guys. Ezra let us down. Ezra Bridger, the letdown king. And we've got Geos on the back. Geos, Geos. Yikes. All right. So we have to bring in a good Vader team here. But man. I think we should be able to do that though, right? Vader, even with the Relic 4 Brood Alpha, Vader should be able to do this. How much tenacity do we have? 60 plus 60, 120. So he'll resist some stuff from the Vader. We could put Piet here with Vader to get him the extra potency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <clears throat> Trooper that. Still four. <laughs> Still four mana. I did not expect that. The GBA. Yeah, I checked the mods. Okay. EP Vader throwing plus one. I don't have Emperor Palpatine on this account yet. Save Piet for troopers. 
If you vader this, will you have enough for the top wall? <clears throat> EP lead vader piet. What the heck are you talking about, Nabokov? I still got these guys to beat. So we've got to we've got to beat this team with troopers. But what we can do, because they have this Bastilashan right here, this is the weak link, right? Snow trooper is going to mow her down, and I'm going to be able to get um, the uh, uh, savior out of the way very quickly. We'll be able to get a kill very quickly. Uh, I don't think Kenobi's going to hold us up too much with the snow trooper just mowing people down, right? So what we can do now that we've got more troopers, we can take out Piet and we can put in the stormtrooper and we can play with five troopers like this and, and still have five troopers with two relic level characters and Moff Gideon. And I think this just steamrolls the, uh, uh, the other team. Moff Gideon is fast enough right let's let's check him 263 so after start goes we'll get 20 percent under veers so let's calculate this out and make sure so he's at 2 283 uh 56 more on 283 is what 330 something so he'll go at 330 and I, I don't think this guy's even close to that. So, yeah, as long as Stark will go first for sure, then um, Gideon will go. That'll power up everybody. Snowtrooper will go. We'll get Savior popped. We'll do mass assist with uh, Veers and probably kill her, get the turn meter going. Um work our way through Kenobi. I feel like, yeah. Are you underdogging with troopers for feet? No, I don't think I can underdog this. I think I need all five troopers to drive the turn meter. You, you need the fifth. If you don't have the fifth trooper in there to link up the turn meter with the, the last buff, you get a gap in your turn meter and you can't you can't close this out. Don't forget the leadership speed boost. So he gets 5%. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay. For each Jedi, they get plus 5 speed. So he gets 25 speed on top of that, right? So 275. But, I mean, we're already faster than him even without the buffs. We're faster than him without the buffs. I don't think Vader is better here. I think we have to trooper this. The only question is whether we use Piet here or use Piet with Vader on that back wall. That's the only question. I feel a bit better about Vader on the back wall if we can save Piet. I feel a little bit worse about my trooper's chance <laughs> if we don't have Piet. So that's a bit a bit frustrating. Not too bad, though. Undermanning ships and the bugs. Yes, that's right. That could potentially get the, feed, the speed. JKR will be at 293. <clears throat> I'd take Piet with the troopers. I don't think you can run this without Piet. Okay. Piet with the troopers. I think your Gideon is too slow even with the Veer's lead. Gideon is too slow. That's correct. But remember, our Stark is going to go first. Stark is the man. He's the myth, the legend. Uh, take, take, take a look. Oh, get off. Get off Veer's. I don't want Veer's. Take a look at this guy. All right? 341. We're going to go first. 341. No doubt in my mind. There's not many people at our level that have 341 speed on anything. Even with their buffs. Uh, Veers. Uh, where is it? Oh, leadership. Imperial troopers gain 20 speed and gain 10% turn meter whenever they gain a buff. 
So what, what's going to happen, Stark goes first without Piet, does this buff, everybody's going to get 20% turn meter. So on top of his 283 that he's already got, Gideon's going to get an additional bunch of turn meter um, from, from him. So he'll go, Gideon will go, and then these guys will get another uh, percent bonus from uh, when Gideon goes. But we can leave Piet in here to be safe. Tarkin there, Vader, Gideon. The question is about Veer Stark, Piet, if that's enough up top. Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay, so if we if we take it back a notch and we just say, okay, this is, I'm, I'm confident that this is going to win against these uh, Jedi. If I can be confident that this is going to win, then we take that, we open up the ships, we get a good ship battle, and then we just see what we can do on that back wall. And if we get it, we get it. And if we don't, we don't. It's, it's what it is. I think that might be a better approach to just do the best we can with what we've got. We know Piet fits in here and makes the troopers, you know, a rocket ship. So we'll just take this in. We'll take in all five. And I think Vader with... Uh, we could take Dooku and the Sith Trooper in on that back wall against the Geos. We could take in a, a couple extra guys to give Vader more speed. We'll have to figure out how much speed we need on Vader. Chat's going crazy. <clears throat> You'll win, just work on bugs. Damn, that's a speedy Stark. <laughs> yeah, I, I could get him a little faster even because a couple of my best speed mods are currently sitting on a Geo Spy. But I don't want to take him off because I need the six dot mods on him right now for uh, uh, for the fleet stuff. Relic Vader should be able to deal with bugs by himself if he's fast enough with both No Escape and, and Merciless Massacre. Yep. Okay, we're going to do this. We're going to get it. Full troopers, do it. Out of curiosity, why is Darth Vader not Relic 7 yet? Because I haven't been able to farm the materials to get him to Relic 7. It's a matter of economy. If I had the stuff, I would put him at seven, but I don't have the stuff. I don't have the stuff yet. Um, okay. I've been talking, wasting time. Got to make sure I'm on the right team. Select squad. We'll pick these guys. In we go. All right. Buffs up. And let's see. I think we're going to target Yoda. We're going to drain their turn meter. And we're just going to see if we can get a kill on Yoda. Pop the Savior right away. Get the Savior. Yoda goes crazy. Okay, let's put this on Stark. Let's just... Shoot Kenobi once. Do the area effect to clear the way for Snow Trooper. Do this area effect on Kenobi. Do this area effect on everybody. Now we got to get Bindo. Get that Bindo out of here before he can start bringing people back. All right, we'll take one shot on him. Take another shot on him. Uh, we'll take AoE to kill Bastila. Take another shot. And another shot. 60 banners. It's good. Life is good. Troopers are good. Moff Gideon is a good addition to that team. Good stuff. <laughs> Easy peasy. Yeah. Yeah, I had confidence in that team. The problem is my troopers are designed to do well against the Revan team and also the Geo team. And unfortunately, I have both of those to deal with. I would have loved to have duplicate troopers. All right, so here we've got Tarkin with the Geos. So this is a fleet that I think uh, I think we're in good shape on, right? We can we can underdog this like that. We probably don't even need all those ships, but I don't want to get caught short against Geos hiding in stealth and whatnot. 
and Plo gets us banners back. Adding Ahsoka in here, there's only one more. I think we just do this. Get in there and run it. <laughs> Troopers are so broken, it ain't even fun no more. <laughs> Target Bastila. Yeah, it's funny, for as weak as Bastila was, I, I couldn't get to her. Uh, she, she could not be a priority target. I really thought I was going to just kill her with the area effect, and that didn't happen. But uh, you see how they just, like, peeled back that Kenobi like he was nothing. He was a relic Kenobi, and they just roasted him. That second relic trooper, having Stark at relic level makes a huge difference. Huge difference to that team's damage. I just got to keep... And then, you know, once I get Tarkin going, I'm probably going to have to circle back and get Veers and just keep that team uh, competent as levels go up. All right, let's get in here and do this fleet. We're attempting to enter a battle with a squad, which is not full. That's what we want to do, though. That's what we want. All right, let's see if we can just stun this spy. Yeah, let's stun the spy. Seems good. Then we'll get buff immunity on Sunfac. Then we will just hit everybody. Try to get some ability blocks going on. Unsuccessfully. Let's get the taunt going. All right, Spy's back out in the open. We don't want to hit Spy yet, though, because we don't want him to be stealthed if he is not stunned. Uh, maybe we can kill him in one hit. Let's try. Got him. All right, let's bring in... Uh, let's bring in Ahsoka just for big damage. Well, that didn't look very big. Unimpressive damage. And he's bringing in more tanks. All right, we have advantage, so let's pull the trigger on the big skill. Uh, let's target him. See what we can do with Ahsoka. Keep working on Sunfac. As long as he gets out of here, then the spy can't assist anybody. It's pretty solid so far. Get the buffs up. Um, let's just do... Basic on him, and we're done. 62? Yeah, 62. Okay, not bad. Not bad at all. So as long as we can kill these Geos, I think we're in pretty good shape, right? Pretty good shape. Let's catch up on chat over here. <laughs> uh, it's great to be in the Empire today. That's Arnold propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> nice called out <laughs> oh, I commented on the EP thing but I learned Snow is better than I thought from Lokwitter Snow is just is is an early game character right it, it's just fun early game against teams like Geos and, and against teams like that um, Jedi team uh, because even if you get a taunter in the way Snow Trooper is just like laying down acres of uh, damage in behind so Good stuff. <laughs> Would you like to see a collaboration between Lokwitter and Arnold? <laughs> maybe someday. Maybe maybe like in two years when uh, when he notices me. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got against these Geos. Vader. Tarkin's good. We've got uh, the Sith Troopers good. This is a Sith, so that's one, two, three, four, five. Five times eight is 40. So our speed will be 304 with that team. That's an underdog team for my feet, and I don't think anybody here is going to beat 304, right? 246. Let's see what kind of mods he's got on these guys. Soldier is all offense. Oops. Uh, what's Spy looking like? Crit chance, crit damage. 
3,000 damage. Yeah, I think if we don't get a lot of debuffs on Brood Alpha, we're probably just going to cull Spy. So what do you guys think of that tactic? Merciless Massacre, you know, hit Merciless uh, Force Crush on the Brute, and then just cull Spy out of there to get rid of a bunch of his damage, and then go around the team and uh, and try to get him that way. Does that work? Or should we really call the Brute Alpha and, and nothing but the Brute Alpha? <laughs> he did notice. Now, he was re he didn't notice me. He was reading off of uh, a, a website that had my name listed on it. All right. I collected my daily rewards and pulled 250 crystals. As long as Brood doesn't have tenacity, you can get four debuffs on Alpha, you can call him. Call the Brood and cut their health. Yeah, the, the problem is, is, is his Brood has tenacity on him, and if I don't get the debuffs off of Force Crush, I think Spy will be my secondary target, and then I just got to hope that I can get back around um, with these guys. Maybe, you know, Tarkin can steal a little turn meter or something and and get me back around to another turn. All right. Should I put Dooku in or should I Yeah, Dooku's giving him speed though, so we're going to we're going to use Dooku. I was thinking about using Kylo Ren on Mast, but he's not he's not that impressive. <clears throat> you need to force crush all force crush debuffs on Brood. Yeah. Okay, let's get in there and give this a try. How this first force crush goes is going to determine what we do, I think. All right, here we go. Merciless Massacre. Let's do the force crush on, on the Brute. And we get three debuffs on the Brute Alpha, which I don't think is going to be enough to call him. So let's get Spy out of there, get an ability block on the Brute Alpha, Get an ability block over here. No ability blocks. Come on, lobster. Get him. All right. Then we'll do this again. And that may be enough to call the brute. Get another turn. And then I can go after the soldier. See if I can keep that soldier out of here because he's the big damage on their team. All right. Let's... Uh, let's Put more debuffs on. Oh, how did that happen? Yuck, oh. Uh, dang. Steal some turn meter from him if I can. Merciless Massacre again. Now we got, we got to hit Sunfac once. Now we will Force Crush on Poggle. Now we will call the Brute Alpha. Tap Sunfac. All right. 55 banners. All right, all right, all right. Had to do a little dance. I feel like without the Sith Trooper in there, without that extra assist, we'd have been uh, hurting for damage. So that's good. 1210. Beat him by 12 banners. A dozen extra banners on top of what he got. So that's a win. And that should be a feat as well. Let's get out here and claim that feat. All right. Cool. And that puts me at 23. And with a win, that'll be Kyber. So I will get Kyber again this season. Phew. Thank goodness. <laughs> Was it even a question? Easy win? Yeah, you guys think that's easy? Maybe it's easy. <laughs> I still get nervous, though. Could have gone wrong. Yeah, good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Definitely need to keep working on my Vader mods, though. I, I have low confidence in Vader because his mods are just kind of mediocre, and I've got him speed modded instead of offense modded. So it's really not what I want. But I, if I, my best offense mods just don't have enough speed, and I can't, I can't go first. So I got to put a speed set on him just so I can do what I did against those 
uh, geos. All right. If you do some basics, you can still call alpha if you don't have enough debuffs. You don't get background to... You only get six, right? So if you, if you do, um, let's take a look at Vader for a second. Count out, see if you're right. So Force Crush has a five turn cooldown. So if you hit on the Brute, then you get five more attacks before that's up. You can Force Crush again right at the end as your last thing that you do. But if you do that, when you go to take your first normal turn out of Merciless Massacre, the Brute is the only one that you can target. So you can't, you can't call him with two rounds of um, Force Crush. Unless there's something I don't understand. <laughs> Congrats on Kyber. Nice. I always get nervous with facing Geos with Vader, even though it's safe most of the time. <laughs> Upgrade Bosk to gear 12. <laughs> uh, you guys, I hate Geo so much. Why do you even let your inbox load up with red dots? Well, because it's a stream, man. It's a stream. All right, what's in here? Donation delivery. Look at that, I got some Carbontes. Don't usually ask for Carbontes, but... Uh, oh, been invited to chat. I'll just leave it red just to annoy the OCD among us. I just won't take those out of there. I'll leave them. <laughs> and then I'll change over to the other account and see if we've got mail there too. Oh yeah, we've got mail there too. We can leave in the inbox. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> That's another reason to have the EP lead. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get the EP lead, guys. I'll get it. I'll get it. Uh-oh. Did we have a super chat in here that I missed? We did. Alpha Male gave me a super chat, gave me a sticker. Hype. Gave me a hype sticker. Oh, man, I missed that. Sorry. Sorry, man. Thank you very much for the super chat. Really appreciate that. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hype. <laughs> Got hype. How dare you car request Carbantes? Really, I don't. I don't request Carbantes. Um, but I got to admit, guys, I sometimes get confused between my main account and the Lokwater account, and I click buttons. And <laughs> uh, I, I'm working on Rex's uh, ship on my main account, and I bought some shards for it on the Lokwater account the other day because, I mean, you're in the shops and you're buying stuff and forgot which screen I was on, so... Yeah, it won't be the first time nor the last that I've uh, <laughs> that I've confused the two accounts. Uh, all right. I always feel guilty requesting guns, carbontes, and cuffs. Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm leaving. I'm leaving the reds on Allura's inbox to drive them crazy. Absolutely, we got to leave them up there. So the OCD among us will start to twitch. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't. Um, I don't have a lot of other questions loaded. Uh, let's uh, let, let's just answer a couple more from over in the Discord. Somebody had asked about how I was doing assault battles with the Lokwater account, and uh, the answer is okay. I mean, I'm not focusing on assault battles, so my troopers do pretty good in the uh, in the one that you could take Empire in. My, my Jedi are pretty terrible, so they don't even complete, like, the, I mean, the second tier or something like that. I can't even get the good tier on the Jedi one. And then uh, Empire with Vader is okay. Um, but I'm not doing uh, the challenge tier on anything yet. The Troopers will be the first thing that can get to challenge tier. Once I, you know, once I get Gideon up and running, get that Veer's Relict, um, I'll, I'll probably be able to do at least challenge tier one. But uh, but other than that, the assault battles are just kind of, I, I take what I can get, and it's uh, it's okay. Not not great, not horrible. 
um, somebody was asking about, or we talked about the Darth Revan being a counter to Galactic Legends, and um, Tice said that he uses Darth Revan every day in the arena, and he can still climb to number one in a shard that has about 30 Galactic Legends in it. So for the conversation we were having the other day about whether or not full relic Revan team could stay relevant in grand or in the uh, uh, squad arena. Uh, Tice is saying, yeah, it's relevant for a long time in squad arena. He can still beat the GL teams. Has to change around the comp a little bit for certain GLs, and he said it's not very good against JML. But uh, against C and SLKR, it's pretty reliable. So that's good. All right. Somebody asked um, what you do in Conquest with a 600K account. And the answer to that is whatever you can. Um, basically, when you're at 600, when I was at 600, I was just working on two teams. I was just working on the Troopers and the Geos and just trying to get that team good. And then when I hit about in the 800 range, that's when I really brought Padme team online and I kind of passed up my Geos with the Padme team. Uh, but Conquest is all about your two best teams. Your, your performance in Conquest is going to be as good as your two best teams. So if you want to build more teams for Grand Arena and have a broader roster, um, that's going to potentially help you in Grand Arena, but it's going to punish you in Conquest. The, the, the way you do the best possible in Conquest is just to relic 10 characters and build two really great teams, and you can work your way almost all the way through normal um, just with two teams as long as you really carefully manage the stamina. Um, three teams, if you have an, another off team that you can use, then, then for sure you're in good shape. But, uh, but yeah, so there, there's nothing special there in Conquest except you're either going to get what you can or you really need to, to, to focus on building up your good teams. Holy Man says, should I work on Shakti clones for big damage in the Sith raid because I need Treya shards? Uh, Shakti clone team can do big damage in the Sith raid um, with trash characters. So I'll show you my team. And if, um, I don't know what you mean by big, big numbers, but if we, uh, if we just look at my clone team, um, where is it? So I've just got a relic seven fives and trash clones and this team right here um this team can beat uh scion and most of treya or it can beat you know phase three and go into phase four so this team is fives get sacrificed the other guys go fast so the key with this team is to let somebody else beat up nihilus and then join somewhere in the Scion phase, and you'll be able to beat Scion and do most of Treya, potentially all of Treya, uh, just with clones, uh, just with Rex doing his aerial advantage. And if you invest more in these guys so that they're better, or if you invest more in Shakti so she doesn't get killed, um, you can get even higher scores. But yeah, you can, you can build a clone team like this and do just fine. And it'll propel you up into the, the higher scores. <clears throat> All right. Question. Turn order for a bounty hunter team. Bosk first, Grief, and Django. Which goes second? It depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to trigger a contract, um, if you're trying to trigger a co contract like Aura Singh, so let's just take this Aura contract, for example, and then we'll talk about Bosk as well. You want him to go first and taunt and get Frenzy. Then he goes, does a mass assist, and he'll immediately follow with a mass assist. And then when she takes her turn third, you've already had all these guys go, and the, the contract is triggered because it's, you know, 10 characters with buffs taking a turn. And on two mass assists with him having taunt up, that's your contract. On Bosk, you have to be careful with Bosk lead because you have to target, the, you have to do damage to the lowest character on their team uh, 10 times, is it, I think? Um, you, you have to be careful that you don't, what just happened? 
Okay, we blew up the account. Um, you have to be careful that you don't uh, trigger a taunt. So that's, that's the big thing. You can have boss go first and then grief go right after and potentially trigger boss's uh, leadership right away. But you just have to be careful that you don't target somebody like behind Kenobi, then Kenobi taunts, and then you can't get to the guy with the lowest um, in order to, to trigger the, the contract. Blue stacks is completely out. I have to restart blue stacks. Okay then. <clears throat> Area 501st, you've only missed the, the low order GAC. I'm about to get into the Allura GAC, but my, uh, my blue stacks died. So I'm restarting blue stacks now. All right. Let's get back on a screen that's at least mildly entertaining. We'll put it over here on the like saber screen so you guys can have some fun stuff to look at while I try to get this going again. Let's see if we got any questions over here. <clears throat> Django before grief, so Django can spread debuffs and attack two times. It depends on what you need for the contract. I would typically have grief faster than Django. There's, there's a lot of reasons to have Django very slow, especially if you ever use him in a Separatist team. You make him slow so that he keeps the damage immunity for as long as possible. Um, if you have Django and Boba on the same team, you typically want Django to go second because on Django, if you put his ships... What? If you put Django's fire onto characters that are already debuffed, they lose health, right? So if you have this uh, Omega here, when you put Conflagration on a character, uh, if they were already suffering a debuff, they lose uh, max health. So what you do is you put Boba first. Boba does his area effect, puts the ability blocks on everybody, then Django goes, and when he does his fire, everybody loses health. So that's the way I would do it. I would do it Bosk first, then Grief, then Boba, then Django. That's just me. All right, trying to get this set up, guys, so that once that blue stack's crashed, now we got to relink everything again. Get it going. Okay, looks like we're back up and running. Now we got to see if we can go to the characters without it crashing. It didn't crash yet, so that's good. Okay, all right. All right, looks like we're back in service. Got that out of the way before the Grand Arena. <laughs> you can G13 Tarkin. I gotta save it. I gotta do it for the video tonight. I gotta, I, I'll, I'll do it all for the footage when I do the video tonight. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at the last Grand Arena. We got, we got in a hurry. Did something dumb, lost this matchup that we definitely should have been able to win, dropped this battle against the troopers back here, so we suffered an ignominious defeat at the hands of our opponent. Now we have the Dragon Warrior to face off against. Stats on this guy, 5.6 million, so he's got about a half million more than me, uh, 2.3 in ships, 3.3 in characters. So his advantage is uh, in both ships and characters. <clears throat> All right. Ships, rebel stuff, Galactic Republic, all the stuff you'd expect to see up top there. He does have a raised Falcon in pretty good shape as well. If we go down and look at his capital ships, he's got a five-star Malevolence. Seven Star Negotiator, also has the Finalizer, and Chimera as capital ship, so he's got four fleets plus cleanup, so he's in pretty good shape. But some of his ships are kind of in the middle, uh, which is good, so we don't have the Hyena Bomber and some stuff like that to deal with the Rebel Y-Wings only. Um, six stars, so some hope on fleets. I think we should be fine. Character-wise, 
two Galactic Legends, SLKR and Jedi Master Luke. General Skywalker, Jedi Knight Luke. All kinds of good stuff. The Revens down here, again, Relic 5 and Relic 3. It's always strange to me to see Revens like this at, at lower Relics. I always feel like these three characters, Revan, Revan, Malak, they should have sevens or eights by their name all the time. Uh, Vader as well, Relic 5. That's okay by me. Got a Relic 3 Wampa, of course, because of the JML. All kinds of stuff that you would expect to see. If we look at this guy's speed on mods, check this out. Check out this Rex. 303 on Rex. Now, I don't know about you guys. That's pretty fast, Rex. Because 303, plus he gets the bonuses from the 501st stuff, and then he'll form up and get everybody going quickly. So 300 speed on the Rex. 286. And then we got some hope here, right? 285 speed on the Darth Revan. The Hux is 270, yeah, 278. So when you look at this guy's account, it's terrifying. And then you start looking at his speed, and other than that Rex, we're not in too bad a shape. So whenever I, sh you know, this is a Sector 5 win already, right? Like we're, we've got a lot of characters that are faster than his characters, and that always gives me so much more confidence going into these battles when I know that I'm faster than my opponent. All right, let's take a look. He hasn't done his fights yet. Well, I mean, Grand Arena just started a little bit ago, so can't expect that he would have done his fights. All right, let's 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 take a look at chat, catch up over here. Let's see if we got anything got, that account is trash. It's not. I don't know. I don't I wouldn't call it trash. I would say it's a it's a good account, but maybe not as much focus on finishing out the relic levels and mods as, as maybe I would do if it was my account. <clears throat> I'm being sarcastic. It's an amazing account. That's the point. Oh, okay. I didn't get that at first. Yeah. Should be at least 540. Oh, 340. What? 540 speed on the Rex. I've never seen a 540 speed Rex. Maybe you mean 340? 340 is hard. That's, oh, that's insane. <laughs> They put up some holds on D and GAC. Okay, let's see. Darth Maul's defense. Darth Maul. Darth Maul defense. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, on defense, always. <laughs> All right. So what I did on defense, I put my uh, banner stealer squads here, just the GOs and the... And, the, you know, he's going to get the ships. I know he's going to want to get the ships. So th these three teams here are just pulling teams from him. Uh, the, you know, you just got to put something decent against this. You, you got to play against these teams, and this is going to steal some banners. Um, it's not going to do great, but that's fine. And then we actually put some decent teams over here. Uh, this team, again, a banner-stealing team. So I did have a question on this team as well, so I'll answer that now that I'm in here. Like, why do I keep putting this team on defense? Uh, it's this simple. I put the Zeta here. That gives 20% turn meter. I've got a really fast um, Sidious, who's a terrible character, but this is area effect. He always picks that first. The I've never seen the AI do a basic when this is up. So he's fast. He gets 20% more on top of that. So he goes from 270 to like three something. And he just goes first and steals banners and then the opponent kills this team. And I don't care because he gets like a 55 banner win against this team. That's all. That is all this team is meant to do is just steal five banners and die. And then we got the Mon Mothma team here. And then on the back wall, we, we, we just kind of lamed out. We put some stuff here now. The, the reason I did that is because I expected him to go really heavy on defense. He's got a lot of good defensive teams. So I kept uh, Sith Eternal for offense. I kept my SLKR for offense, feeling like I was going to fight that Darth Revan, the gas, all that stuff. Um, 
but that looks like a pretty clear zone to win. And this looks like a pretty decent zone to get through. Um, I feel like I feel like I can get through this gas team with my bounty hunters pretty easily. I, I've done it before. My bounty hunters are actually timed and set up for this matchup to kill Skywalker. But I do have the Sith Eternal Emperor, and I feel like that is more of a sure thing against this squad even than um, even than the bounty hunters. So we probably do Sith Eternal here, I feel like. And then I still have my SLKR if there's any surprises on the back wall. And if there's no surprises on the back wall, then we can just SLKR solo somewhere. Do it that way. All right. <laughs> All right, let's see. Those bounty hunters, <laughs> those bounty hunters suck. They're not even gear 13. Yeah, well, y you can't sleep on Bosk. Even at gear 12, this guy can be annoying. So him and Dengar together, you got to bring in enough damage to get through Bosk. You can't, you, you just can't sleep on him. It's not that hard, but don't, uh, you know, don't, don't come in underdogging and expect to do great things. All right, this I think we just do this one first because we know how this goes. And uh, make sure we're picking the right Kylo Ren masked. Okay, this is not the Galactic Legend. This is the Kylo Ren mask that we want. So we'll get this battle out of the way first. And then we're probably going to go over and, and see what we get on that back wall. We'll just work through those guys and uncover the back wall. I'm thinking for my Sith Eternal team that I'm probably going to use just C, Watt, and uh, the the Sith tank, the set tank. Um, does anybody think that I need to bring more in there? Should I bring in Moff Gideon to cut down their damage? I, I, I could bring in Moff Gideon. That's kind of a fun thing to do against that team. All right. Getting good banners here. Don't don't counterattack him to death. Don't count. Oh, dang. All right. We're not at full health after that. We've got too many counterattacks. All right. We dropped the banner already, boys. Okay. So Mon Mothma might be triumvirate. Bounty hunters or anything that I want can clean this up. So against gas... We're going to use Sith Eternal, Wat Tambor, we'll use the Sith Empire Trooper Tank, and then I don't really do anything else with my Armorer, so I almost feel like I just throw the Armorer in here because I'm not going to use her anywhere else. <laughs> The Palpatine stumble flashbacks. <laughs> yep. Always use the second special, only middle or basic when blind. That's why you always use the second special. Um, not, what, uh, what are you guys talking about? What Thrawn Echo? Is that still a feat? Oh, yeah. I do. I need the Echo feat. I do still need the Echo feet. Where's Echo? Yeah, I still need that feet. Good call. Good call. Good call. Good call. All right. Should we put Gideon in here just to play it safe? The to Gideon or not to Gideon? That is the question. I don't feel. I don't see anything where I need my troopers at at full power, and I've still got a trooper team without Gideon, so I can put him in here, and we can just make a hundred percent sure that we win, right? <laughs> Not bad batch echo for the feet. Yeah, I was convinced it was a bad batch echo. Uh, use armor over Gideon. All right. All right, armor or put her in there. We're not going to use her anywhere else than him for the feet, and we're good to go. Let's get in there. Take him out. 
This is overkill. It could be. Could be overkill. Let's uh, put this on Palpatine right away so we don't mess it up. Let's link him. And I think we want to link him with the Arc Trooper. Just to cut down the damage. All right, and Skywalker will sit down in a hurry. All right, Watt, thank you for the Beskar shard. All right, sit down. Where's Fives? Get deceived. All right, let my armor live. Now it's pretty much guaranteed at this point. Um, unless we do something really dumb. I don't even think we can lose this now. Right? Maybe not get high banners, but Skywalker can never stand back up because he doesn't have protection. This is a fun, like, if you think of it in terms of the actual characters themselves, like Anakin just kneels before Palpatine and never gets up again. He just has, you know, too much uh, reverence for, for that to ever happen. Is Thrawn not part of the feat? Was he? Oh, did I mess it up again? Oh, boy. Oh, well, if that's the case, I thought it was just those two, just just Echo. All right, well, let's put this on auto, and I'll go over and I'll look at the feet. Win a Grand Arena battle with Echo and Wat Tambor. Nope, it's just those two. Just those two. There's another feat that's like, Ahsoka, Bo-Katan, and Rex. <laughs> All right. Echo plus Watt is defeat. Where did I get thrown? <laughs> the Rex elite just tickles him. Yeah. Yep. All right. So that was a pretty, pretty good deal. So what do we want to do against these bounty hunters? Now, we, we need, we've got that other feat. What's the other feat? Let's, let's take a look at this other feat. Um, Ahsoka, Tano, Bo-Katan, and Rex. Ahsoka, Bo-Katan, and Rex. Okay. So we could do something like this. We could do a Padme team here. Uh, and put in bo and Rex. bo messes up a Padme team, though, because you're not all Galactic Republic at that point. Hmm. All right, well, we'll fit that in somewhere. Uh, maybe we should just do Vader on these guys, right? We can do... We can do a Vader with bo Ahsoka and Rex just in the team. It's not that they would be doing anything. They would just be there. Hmm. Bogotan, Ahsoka, and Rex. And then who else would we need for this Vader team to pull this off? Piet? Put Piet in here? My trooper team's getting thinner and thinner. I could do that just to get the feet. Or I could just wait till I do my SLKR. I'll just put those guys with SLKR. That'll work, too. Okay, what are we going to take against these bounty hunters? What What's good but not too good? Um, let's see. We could probably just nest it, right? Is there anything here that we're scared of with nest? Turn meter removal. Yeah, if we got too much turn meter removal, that could get nasty. All right. Uh, maybe the clones? Oh, we already used up a clone, and we got to save Rex. And we've got to save Ahsoka, 
So what we could do, we could just do this and get rid of Ahsoka and kill these bounty That's overkill for the bounty hunters, but there's a lot of these teams that I don't think I'm going to need anywhere. I'm just, I, I just don't need them. So in we go. <clears throat> All right, let's kick Bosk right in the face. Uh, let's kill Greedo before he has a chance to do anything. I said kill Greedo. All right. Padme is a ability block on her, so that's no good. <clears throat> Here's that famous potency on Anakin again. This is why we want potency on Anakin. Um... She's got healing immunity on her, so that doesn't do anything. All right, kick this Bosk again. Let's get the counterattacks going. Kill Dengar while I can see him. We gotta get uh, we gotta get Barris healed back up. Don't want to lose banners on her. Okay. Good enough. Good enough is good enough. Cool. All right. No need for Barris either. Eh, probably not. Probably didn't need Barris. All right. So here we've got uh, Jedi under Bastila, and we've got Night Sisters. Easy peasy. But these Night Sisters. Oh man. Oh man. I kind of want to do SLKR against these Night Sisters, just for funsies, just for fun. So you want you want me to nest the Mon Mothma team? Why are we so interested in nesting the Mon Mothma team? Um, that first order didn't. Uh, you know he does it does have uh, Kylo in there. Kylo Ren Mast is in there, so yuck. So we could we could try to nest the Mon Mothma team. Sure, why not? It's good banners, right? Let's get in there and nest with Kira lead. I actually invested a little bit in Kira. I leveled her up a little bit. Not enough to do anything, but in we go. Troopers on the Night Sisters will be simple. But if I put in that, that Mutt team of all of those characters that are needed for the feet, and I do that with... Um, we want to get Biggs into a loop where, he, where we keep critting him, and he keeps getting turns, and we can stack up tons of damage that way. Come on, loop. Loop, loop, loop. Go. Crit. Go again. Yeah. Come on, crit me. No. The loop ended. I missed my counterattack. All right, there we go. Loop begins. Such an easy way to get her cycled up. All right. Now we just wait two minutes. Exciting stuff. So yeah, if I go in against the Night Sisters with SLKR with the Bo-Katan and all that stuff, uh, I'm going to lose a bunch of banners if I if I take that team in. But if I take in SLKR and I just do that sweep right away, reset with uh, uh, Hux, do it again, they won't even get a turn. So Bo-Katan won't die. I won't lose any banners. I'll be able to pull off a 60-banner win. And the Night Sisters can't resurrect because SLKR. So I think, I think that would be a fun way to complete the feat and also get full banners. All right, come back. Come back, Biggs. You're not done yet. It's time to live again. Maybe. Well, looks like we got too much damage. We're getting over top of them. Rebel Officer Leia Organa going down. Oh, look at all that damage. 
Organa's big damage comes in a bunch of small packets. So instead of being one big hit, it's a series of small hits. So Nest doesn't care too much about that. Hey, Wedge is back. Gideon's <clears throat> leadership ignores SLKR. Um, can't revive mechanics. Oh, really? I didn't know that. What's Gideon's leadership? He's just for the... Uh, his leadership is weird. It, it's, it's Star Wars. It's like got way too many words in it. Okay, if he has exactly one dark side, da 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 da, -da. Okay, whenever an enemy with the leader tag, whenever... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Imperial troopers gain 40% offense and revive with health and protection the first time they're defeated. That goes through SLKR? Really? Wow. Huh. Who knew? All right, so yeah. Let's uh, let's bust through this front wall. What are we going to use against these guys? I feel like Vader could be super efficient here, right? We'll take in our, our, our three-man kill... Ooh, hey, get out of there. Take in our three-man kill squad with Vader. And just rough them up. Or we could take in the Jedi. They might not even get a turn with these Jedi, right? Because we'll pass it over to Bastila. Yoda goes once, twice. Bindo sends him over. Could be. Or we can do troopers. Troopers is probably the cleanest win, right? We can just do troopers here. And there's nothing on the back wall that's scaring us. What do we have? Night Sisters and... Uh, come on. I'm blanking. Oh, the Jedi. Yeah, we can clean those Jedi up with Triumvirate or anything that we want. We've got so many teams, it's crazy. So many good teams. So many good teams. So we do troopers here, and we just kick ranged out and say, we don't even need you. Go in with an underdog squad looking for some banners. <clears throat> SLK solo for the top feet. What what feet are you talking about? The top feet. I'm at a loss. I'll have to go look at what you're talking about with that. All right, let's mass assist on this Kylo Ren. No kills. Uh oh. All right, let's drain their turn meter and get the kill after all. There we go. Days everybody. Dazed and confused. Phasma going down. Everybody going down. Staggered. Stunned. Killed. Treated poorly. All right. What top feet are you talking about? Let's go look. Okay, so we got that feet. We got that feet. For the top feet. Um, I don't know. <clears throat> JKR, then Trooper the Night Sisters. First Order team. I, okay, I, I guess I'm confused by what chat's saying. I, probably obvious what they mean, but <laughs> I'm not getting it. All right. So we'll do the Night Sisters with SLKR. And we need Bo Katan. We need Ah Soka Tano. And Rex. Guys, check my math. Make sure I'm not messing this up. Make sure I'm not messing this up. I don't want to have the wrong guys here. I'm going to make them bow to the First Order. Bow to the First Order. That's what I think I want to use, right? Rex, bo -Katan, and then we just go with Kylo. We go give him another turn with Hux. Stun Asajj if she's going to be a problem. Otherwise, just kill everybody. I would not use a fifth. 
I want to I want to go twice with SLKR because that is a relic, uh, Asajj Ventress. <clears throat> that is an Asajj Ventress. Okay, that's the people that I need for that feat, right? Nobody in chat's telling me any different. I'm trusting you guys to double check my homework. Ahsoka Tano, Bo Katan, and Rex. That should be it. Ahsoka Tano, Bo Katan, and Rex. Okay, get in there. No fifth. I don't need that one banner. If one of these, if Bo Katan dies, I lose uh, like four banners. So putting in a fifth character to make sure that Bo Katan doesn't die is the order of the day. Um, all right, get in there. Mass assist. Dodged. All right, got to stun you then. All right, let's get turn meter up for no one. Let's give Kylo another turn. And that should finish it. Okay, bo still alive, 60 banners. I'm happy I didn't. I, the Hux, I feel, was uh, necessary to get 60. All right, that should give me another feat. Let's go make sure we didn't mess that up. All right, there we go. Look at that. Yay, another feat. Cool. I do that every time I click all the way out on this uh, blue stacks. All right, now the most possible banners that we can get here. What's a good, efficient way to win here? Uh, Triumvirate can win. They have a bunch of tenacity because of Bastila, right? So should we just do this? That wins. We can put in a Hermit Yoda just to make it win faster. JKR Jedi against this team. Okay. All right, that's what we'll do then. Got to go sleep for school. All right, Aiden, see you later, man. JKR, Jolie, Bastila, Grandmaster Yoda. Okay, I, I I think skip Bastila, right? We don't we don't really need Bastila and Hermit Yoda's good. All right. Let's get in there. Let's get in there. Um come on Yoda, get over there. Kill yourself. Your doppelganger. All right, Vindo's got to go next because we just don't want those revives. Look at that guy. He's having none of it. He's like, crit? What's a crit? I don't get crit. Nobody critting on me. That's all right. We don't need to crit you to kill you. All right, do buffs again to get foresight on everybody. All right, don't get a turn, Vindo. We don't want that. We don't want you having a turn. All right, now you're not going to get a turn. Okay. Please don't hit my protection. I want 61 banners. Okay, let's see. Oh, uh, yeah, let's get this in here. All right, mark down that shock T. No, 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 not the Hermit Yoda. Man. That's twice today Bridger's been a letdown. Once he stole the banner from me on my team, and now the opponent says where Bridger stole the banner from me. Sad. All right. Now let's get in here and look at some fleets. The First Order fleet on defense. That makes me sad, boys and girls. If you have a First Order fleet, please don't put it on defense. This is, the AI is horrible at playing this fleet. Horrible. Horrible at playing this fleet. So I think we First Order this. And uh, what do we want to do here? We'll do the uh, Separatists against this. 
Sure enough. Sure enough. Get that hyena bomber in there. Get that sun fact going. We'll put in a couple more geo ships, and then we'll put in uh, what is it? We'll put in that just to be safe. Just to be safe. All right, here we go. All right, the finalizer. Gonna get finalized. Stun that sunfac right away. Brutalize. Don't just don't hit the sunfac. Okay. As long as they don't hit the sunfac, we're fine. Um, let's. This is the cleanse, right? So let's cleanse off our sunfac. So that we get use of him. We're gonna put these buzz droids onto the Kylo Ren unmasked right away. And we're gonna hit him a few times. I'm gonna finish him off. Okay, let's see, he's bringing in Boba Fett. I think Boba Fett would look good with some buzz droids. All right, get him. Let's see, bring in the spy. With any luck, that'll, oh, that's the soldier. I did that. Those geo ships look exactly the same. Uh, let's go for the TIE pilot over here. We don't want to mess with his uh, shuttle until we're ready to kill it because it has massive counterattacks all over the place. All right, we'll get that ship back. Uh, let's do this. I'll finish that off and then finish off the shuttle. Yeah, we could put buzz droids on it like this. Oh, we shot all the buzz droids off right away. Okay, there we go. 56 banners. Black tip equals spy because he's stealthy. <laughs> no soldier. All right, so... Then against this... We'll use our first order fleet. And again, we're going to we're going to ask our opponent to bow to the first order. All right, here we go. Kill Sunfac first in this matchup. Guys, when you fight against the malevolence, you have to kill Sunfac first with the first order fleet anyway. Because the the taunt that Sunfac can get um also, I mean, if a buff ship starts a turn, he gets turn meter and uh, buff uh, and taunt. Uh, defense buff. That's what I'm trying to say. He gets a buff to his defense. So you just you really got to just take that ship out right away or it gets super annoying. All right, gives buzz droids all over us. We're just going to get speed up, then hit him, then put... Damage over time is all over everyone, then bring in our Plo, get rid of all these buzz droids. Then we're going to put Taunt on this little guy. And then we'll work our way through his Hyena Bomber. Um, I think in one shot, right here, get him. Oh man, wasn't enough. Okay, let's see, steel turn meter from him. Power him up. And that dude's in stealth, which is super annoying. So now we have to we have to kill these guys that are not in stealth. And let's just keep the train going. Now he gets more. As soon as that guy pops out of stealth, we're good to go. We're golden at that point. Right now we're just losing banners. This is a pretty cool trick. Oy. Let's see. Let's do this. And then we can get an assist with defense down and be pretty confident that we're going to get him. So, yeah, having a stealth ship floating around out there amongst all the other droids making me kill them first is kind of uh, 
kind of annoying. It feeds the opposing capital ship turn meter. So 2109 feels pretty good. Didn't drop any banners. Averaged high 50s, like 58 or something like that per, per combat. So I think we're in pretty good shape. Even though I didn't put a Galactic Legend on defense, he saved both of his Galactic Legends for offense. So it really is a, a clear versus clear and who can be more efficient. And I'm just hoping that I put just enough stuff on defense that um, my efficiency is a little better than his. That's my hope anyway. All right. Good stuff. So if we win that, it'll put us at um, uh, let's see, ten and two on both accounts. If we win both of these, we'll be at I think we're at nine and two on both accounts right now. So if we if we win these, we'll be at ten and two. That's not a bad season. CG needs needs to make the ships double drops as well. It would make ships much more enjoyable. I agree with that. I agree with that wholeheartedly. I think it's foolish that they made the characters double drops and the ships not because it makes people who already don't like fleet have another reason to dislike fleet. And the only good news is for people who know exactly what fleet is worth and what it gets you in the game, we're the ones that are going to still farm it on single shard and be ahead of the other people that give up on it and won't. But uh, it's pretty, pretty annoying. Joey asked, what's, what is the crystal math in the title? Oh, I didn't get that prepared in time, unfortunately. Um, I, I can go through it. I'll probably just make a video out of it at some point. But I can, I can tell you the crystal math here and uh, maybe, maybe save. Uh, let, me, let me pull it up. Let me pull it up because I've got all the math done. I just don't have it in a readily presentable form for everybody. So here, let's uh, uh, let my computer grind away. It's suffering memory loss. I've got so many windows open and I'm streaming and it has, uh, it has a hard time keeping up. So once it loads, I should be able to see my, my crystal math. Uh, I had a question from somebody who said that what, what they were doing is they were getting good placement in fleet and they were getting decent placement in squad but they'd cut back their daily refreshes so that they could save up stun guns and have one stun gun a week and just, just buy it for 2,500 crystals um, with all of the, the, the crystals that they were getting out of the shop or you know, buy just a Mark V stun gun for 1,300 or you know, whatever by the end of the week. So I, I tried to encourage this person to do um, refreshes in Cantina instead and was met with some resistance in my advice so I did some math and it basically goes like this one stun gun is 2500 crystals the two main parts of it are the the stun gun itself for 1274 and the carbanti for 1400 if we look at cantina refreshes and we just go in and we do the Kylo Ren unmasked node um, because that is low energy um, and it has Kylo and the ship. So we can do a Cantina refresh and run this battle 12 times every time we do a Cantina refresh. So if I take that same, you know, just round it off and say 2,600 crystals that you would be buying a stun gun with, and instead I do 26 Cantina refreshes, it would take me nine days, so it's a little over a week to get through. But I could run that node three 112 times okay that would get me 188 kylo ren unmasked shards 94 silencer shards and if you take 188 shards of kylo ren and 94 of the ship and you convert them in the shard shop you get a total of almost 6400 um shard currency if you then take that shard currency and you look at just that one spot that's got the premium gear on it, by way of comparison, it's 372 for six pieces. So if we take all of that energy that we've 
uh, built up by farming the Kylo Ren Unmasked node, uh, we end up making 23 purchases, which gives us a total of 138 scraps that we can purchase. So the, the moral of the story is if you use that same energy on Cantina refreshes, you get 38% more. Because remember, if you bought the stun gun, you bought 50 Carbanti scraps and 50 stun gun scraps. That's 100 scraps. By converting it out of the Kylo Ren unmasked node, we get 138. So we're already 38% more efficient. And those 312 runs also gave us 780,000 credits. So on top of the gear that you can buy, that you're already getting potentially more gear than you could just for buying it straight up, you also get three quarters of a million credits and you get um, uh, cantina currency for the cantina store as well. So the, the moral of the story is uh, you don't want to buy gear like that straight up unless you've made it through all of your basic refreshes. Um, the first three refreshes on all your different kinds of energy, including cantina energy, are just going to get you more out of the game than buying a piece of gear straight up for crystals. The only place that that's not true is for the hollow projectors. There's, there's a, a series of gear that, that only cost 15 per shard, and this math falls apart at 15 per shard. So wherever, if we, if we go in here and look, it's probably going to take me forever. But uh, these right here, they cost 15 per shard that you buy, and you can't farm them for that price. Okay? So the math falls apart here. And for the, if we have any instances of the mark, no, we don't. We don't. So suffice to say that, that, you know, the first three energy refreshes of each energy type is where it's at. You don't want to be buying stun guns until you've used up all that energy. Even if you've refreshed everything but not cantina, you can still use the cantina refreshes to get ahead. Now, this node, I just farm like crazy, right? Because these things have a bad drop rate, and you always need them. So that's my default node to farm is over here on the uh, uh, signal data. So it, it doesn't have the same conversion rate where you're getting directly getting gear out of it. But you gotta, you got to get this stuff anyway. So, yeah, I farm the heck out of this stuff. I just used up a little bit of it. Guess what I did, guys? I did something foolish on my main account. You guys are going to laugh. This is pretty funny. You ready for this? Where is he? Yeah, we relic the spy. We relic the spy on the main account, too, because our guild is, is doing this sort of, you know, it's mandatory that everybody has to get a watch shard. And uh, I get a watch shard all the time, but I figure as soon as I tell my guild, yeah, I always get a watch shard, then I'll probably go in there and fail that mission. So <laughs> I relicked another Geo just to make sure that I wouldn't <laughs> fail on the Wat Tambor mission, just to lock it down 100%. So, <laughs> yeah, funny stuff. But I was hoping to have all that stuff pulled together w with the crystal math where you guys could see the cantina refreshes, but... Uh, but like I said, I'll eventually put that in a video somewhere where you can see the math. Maybe in somebody's account review or something like that. I'll, I'll pop it in there. But uh, but yeah, so there's my geos on my main account now. We got uh, Brood Alpha and Spy both. And I had to put the Zeta on it. They were running some kind of program that said, until I put the Zeta on the leadership, it kept saying that I was unprepared for the Watt mission. Like, like this second Zeta on the Brood Alpha is that important. So I put it on there just to stay off my guild leader's radar. <laughs> Talk about a waste of a Zeta. I, put, I literally just put it on there so that my guild leader doesn't get flagged when he runs that uh, uh, bot <laughs> to see people's preparedness. All right. Does your guild do P4 dark side GOTB? <clears throat> you can use geos with Watt in the mission on the bottom zone. Yeah, you, you have to have Watt at 16.5, though, so 
you know, you gotta get, you gotta have Watt at least to seven stars before you can do that mission because a, a four star Watt isn't cutting it. My, my Watt's too little. I can't do that mission yet. Isn't that the case? I'm pretty sure it has a the galactic power requirement on Watt. <clears throat> All right, Glorious G says, to summarize, don't use crystals on gear because that's what evil CG wants you to do. <laughs> Jin Urso shards got to be some of the most annoying things to find in the game. Yeah, she's only in that guild store, and she's a, a fairly rare. I, I get her maybe five times a week. So on the Loquitor account, I've got quite a few Jin Urso shards now. We're getting close on her. I didn't really think that I wanted to build Jyn Erso, but the way this account's shaping up, I just I don't have more characters, you know, like 260. So we need, what, 70, 70 more of these? So we're almost, almost to Jyn Erso. I've got all my Phoenix. I think I need, like, two more shards of Kanan, and then I just need to farm Hera, and we'll have the Phoenix get Thrawn unlocked. Early game until you have a wide selection of good mods, is it an okay strategy to just put a speed on everybody and then use the second set according to the tune type? That is absolutely fine. That, that, that's a good strategy, and I, I've actually said that before in, in one or more videos, that any character can use a speed set. It might not be the optimum set for that character, but every character can use a speed set. Look at that got speed on Bosk. We got speed sets on just about everybody. We worked on offense because we did want offense on Vader. Uh, we just never got the mods for it. Um, we, we put offense mods onto Jedi Knight Anakin, I believe, but it's still not a great set. So, yeah, I've pretty much got these offense sets, and then everybody is speed and crit chance pretty much for every everything for the rest of the account. <laughs> Stormtrooper, crit chance, all over the place. <clears throat> Upgrade Bosk. Call it a personal question. What is the time that you hit the button and use Nest on weird Phoenix teams in the game? This update, gear limit, I know. Um, it's galactic power. It's all about galactic power, guys. So... Going into the next round, assuming that they don't implement the changes, we have to stay under 1.3 million galactic power, if I remember correctly, right? So this goes up to 1.29, so we have to stay under 1.3. I'm going to open up that U-Wing, right? So once we get this U-Wing running and all those characters running, that's probably going to give me another, I don't know, 80,000 galactic power, something like that. I'm going to relic Tarkin. I'm going to put a couple more Zetas on. Um, I'm going to be pushing that 1.3 million. So Nest can't join the team until I have room for her to join the team um, in the next in the next round or whenever they implement those changes. So, so yeah, that's, that's it. I just have to be careful because I want to build the characters that I want to build and not go over 1.3 before the next Grand Arena. And there's no reason, I mean, other than I just wanted to play in every Grand Arena, just, you know, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, just walk my way up one tier at a time. And then eventually there'll be a point where I won't make an advancement before Grand Arena rolls around, right? Like I'll, when I'm at 1.7 or something like that, I'll have to play in that division twice. I, and I don't mind that. And if it was if I was just pushing this account as fast as I could, I would go ahead and build some of that stuff. But uh, but because I'm trying to play in every Grand Arena level, I'm, I'm managing it. I finally finished the Ewok farm with 3PO. <laughs> nice. Everybody's clamoring for a Bosk upgrade. Bosk is not going to get upgraded. He's not. Um, I think when Kenobi gets upgraded, then... If, if Bosk upgrade is still lit after I level Kenobi, then I will gear 12 Bosk. 
So we'll do Tarkin first. We'll click the button on Kenobi. I think he will use up a Carbanti, and then this will go dark. One of these things, I think, needs a Carbanti. If not, then we're good. Stun cuff there. I don't see a Carbanti. There's the Carbanti. There's the Carbanti, and we don't have enough. So I think we're stuck on Bosk once we level up that Kenobi. Got to wait another week. <laughs> Bosk looks so juicy. If they do the update for the next one, you'll have an additional up to 1.6. Yeah. If they do it, if they do it, then we'll push up. We'll, we'll do the, the most galactic power that makes sense. I just love the upgrade button. Can't resist it. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Well, I think I'm going to call the stream there. Been on long enough for tonight. Thank you all for coming out. I really do appreciate you guys coming and hanging out, watching, having fun, asking questions. I hope maybe that Hound's Tooth discussion helps one or two of the newer players who are struggling with that ship. Uh, maybe figure out how to get through it. The Grand Arenas were fun today. I didn't do any obvious blunders where I picked the wrong character or, uh, you know, got in too much of a hurry. So slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Appreciate you all, and I'll see you.